Hello, fifth graders. Today we're going to look at the second settlement, um, the Jamestown colony. So I need you to get your chapter six packet and you're going to open it up to this section here that says Jamestown colony. So yesterday we learned about Roanoke. We are going to explore that more, like I said before, but I have a read aloud that goes with it and an activity that I'd rather do with you in person. So I decided today we're gonna go ahead to Jamestown and then on Monday, I'm gonna go ahead and have you do the Roanoke. And if you're in my other cohort, then today you're doing the Roanoke activity and you'll be doing this one on Monday. It'll all work out. We'll all be caught up by Tuesday. So right now, you should have your packet, a pencil, and your textbook opened up to page 61. I'm gonna read pages 61 and 62 to you. And then after, we're gonna fill in those blanks together for the Jamestown Colony. So here we go. In 1606, King James gave permission to a group of wealthy men to start a colony in North America. So that would be their sponsor. The group sent settlers to Virginia hoping to make money from the colony. That was their motive. In April 1607, 105 settlers arrived in Virginia. Most of them hoped to become wealthy by finding natural riches like gold. They picked a spot near a wide river and built a settlement. In honor of King James, they called it Jamestown. A lot of people built settlements near water because water is something that's natural for us to survive. <laughs> Unfortunately, the settlers built Jamestown on a marsh. A marsh is a low area of wetland that's sometimes unhelpful for people. The water around Jamestown was dirty and salty. The land was not good for farming and mosquitoes carried a deadly disease, malaria. So far it's not sounding good. Within eight months, disease killed most of the settlers. By January 1608, only 38 of them were still alive. In 1607, sorry, in late 1607, one of the settlers, Captain John Smith, was captured by some Native Americans. They took Smith to their chief, a man named Powhatan. Powhatan ordered Smith to kneel and lay his head between two stones. Several men raised their clubs in the air. Smith believed that he was about to be killed. At that moment, Powhatan's young daughter, Pocahontas, laid her head on Smith's. Smith believed that she saved his life. Historians, though, think that Smith may have misunderstood a Native American ceremony. Later, Pocahontas visited Jamestown several times, bringing food to the settlers. Powhatan's people also taught the settlers to hunt, plant crops, and fish. This sounds like a good working relationship. Meanwhile, more settlers kept arriving from England. In 1608, John Smith was elected president of the colony. Many of the settlers were gentlemen who were used to having servants do all the work. Smith knew that the settlement needed everyone's help in order to survive. He said firmly that any man who would not work would not eat. Smith's leadership helped to save the colony. That winter, only 18 colonists died. So we're gonna turn this page a little bit more about Jamestown. So now at the top, page 62. The next year, Smith returned to England after being badly burned by an explosion of gunpowder. The colonists had lost a strong leader. The Powhatan was no, and Powhatan was no longer helping them. The winter of 1609 to 1610 was known as the starving time. Many settlers had to eat horses and dogs. Hundreds of them died. Only about 60 settlers survived. The Jamestown settlers never found any gold. They needed a way to support their colony in order to stay in America. Then a man named John Rolfe found a way to grow a sweet tasting kind of tobacco. People in England loved the new Virginia tobacco. Now the settlers had something they could trade for money and supplies. Tobacco became Virginia's gold. So even though they didn't find gold, they found something that was just as um, profitable for them. By 1619, 
Jamestown was growing. Each settler was given 50 acres of land to farm. A ship brought over, oh, sorry, brought about 200 women to Virginia so that settlers could marry and raise families. That year, settlers also elected representatives to make laws for the colony. They call this group the House of Burgesses. Burgesses was an English word for elected representatives. Only wealthy men could be elected to this group. Even so, Virginia now had a more democratic government than England. So they still liked this government better than where they were. Meanwhile, Powhatan's people worried about so many settlers coming to their land. In 1614, John Rolfe married Pocahontas, and for a time, the settlers and Native Americans were at peace. Pocahontas even went to England and met King James, but in 1617, she became ill and died before she could return home. Soon after, Powhatan died and his brother became chief. In 1622, the new chief and his followers attacked Jamestown and killed 347 colonists. But Jamestown survived and became the first successful English settlement in North America. So definitely not, not easy times, but they kept up, kept with it, and started the first English settlement. So what I'd like you to do now is I'd actually like you to pause this video and I want you to try to complete the Jamestown colony fill in the blanks on your own and get as many of them as you can and then you'll press play and we'll check our work and make sure we've got them all right. So press pause now. All right, welcome back. I'm gonna see how you did and here we go. In April of 1607, 105 settlers arrived in Virginia with permission from King, yes, King James, because we're talking about Jamestown, it's named after him, to start a colony. They picked a spot near a, so they picked a spot near a wide river, I'm just gonna write river, and built a settlement calling it Jamestown. In honor of King James. Okay, now there were a couple of problems. The first one was it was built on a marsh, a low area of wetland that is sometimes unhealthful for people. And problem number two, the land was not good for farming. And mosquitoes carried a deadly disease, and that disease is called malaria, that killed most settlers. By 1608, only 38 were still alive. So, so far, this is not looking good. One of the settlers, John Smith, was captured by Native Americans. They took him to Chief Powhatan, where he was helped by the chief's daughter, Pocahontas. Later, she visited Jamestown several times, bringing food to the settlers. Okay, now this was a, different, a little bit different than Roanoke because Powhatan's people helped the settlers. So Powhatan's people taught the settlers how to hunt, plant crops, and fish. And if you can do those three things, then you know what else you get to do? You get to eat. <laughs> Smith knew that to survive, everyone had to work. Even people that were used to having servants do everything for them. Smith's leadership helped the colony survive. And I also should mention that Powhatan's people helped them survive because without them, they wouldn't be able to work either. The Jamestown settlers never found any gold. That's what they went there for in the first place. But a man named John Rolfe found a way to grow tobacco. That was one of those cash crops that was mentioned in I think, chapter four. The settlers were able to trade it for, so what did they trade this tobacco for? They traded it for money and supplies. 
A group called the House of Burgesses made laws for the colony. I know sometimes we don't like having rules, but they really do help keep us safe and organized. So even though they came here and they had these new freedoms, they still needed to make some laws because they saw that having laws helps to keep the peace. In 1619, settlers elected a representative to make laws for the colony. John Rolfe married Pocahontas and there was peace for a time. So things are going well. But when Chief Powhatan died and his brother took over, they attacked the settlers. So they're under some new leadership and not necessarily wanted to help as much as um, Chief Powhatan had. So they killed 347 colonists. But Jamestown survived and became the first successful English settlement in North America. I know that Roanoke was a settlement, but we don't know what happened to Roanoke. It did not continue. This was the first successful one. So you're all set with social studies for today. I hope you did well getting these blanks filled in. And again, make sure you have any corrections made to ones that you maybe didn't get correct the first time around. I'll see you guys soon.